Welcome to our next edition of the Foundation Speaker Series. My name is Michelle Warofka, and today I'm very excited to spend some time with Miss Addie Lizelle. Uh, Addie is the Director of Operations for the Black Sheep Incorporated, which is an integrated collegiate media and marketing company, helping businesses and brands reach students across 200 plus universities through impactful relationship-driven strategies. And joining me today from their headquarters in Chicago, Illinois, welcome Addie. Thanks so much for taking the time to be with me today. Of course, of course. I'm at my, our new headquarters, my apartment. Um, yes, but all the way in Chicago, it's uh, good and warm here. So yeah. Wonderful. Thanks again for being here. Now, and uh, if we could kind of start out here, uh, telling us a little bit more about your company, the Black Sheep Inc., which is a tough name for me to get out. <laughs> but uh, and I, I love the name. So if you could kind of tell us a little bit more about the company, the services, and, and maybe even elaborate on how the company came about its name. Yeah. So we um, so we actually started as a satire newspaper uh, at the University of Illinois, and from there it sort of exploded into selling ads and then handing out newspapers with ads in them or ads attached. And from there, we've grown past satire, unfortunately. Though it's fun, we, you know, we've grown out of that um, and moved into just connecting college students with companies. So our clients are a lot of student housing organizations will work with us about advertising on campuses, um, a lot of big brands as well. You know, we're working with GoPuff right now, which is a Philly-based brand. Um, and Head and & Shoulders, and uh, you know, we've worked with L'Oreal and um, uh, LaCroix and things in the past as well. So you know, we work with a lot of brands and connecting them to college students. And you know, like you said, we work with college students at 200 universities. My last check was about 2,000 students that we had hired wow. across the country. So um, you know, lots of opportunity to get a, a job in marketing and, and brand ambassadorship and you know we, we do everything from on the ground field marketing to Instagram influencers which is fun and hot or um, you know we do secret shopping as well for any sort of brand that wants us to test how their training is going. Um, so a ton of opportunities for large companies to connect to this very um, niche market um, and also for those students to get some experience in um, mark, field marketing and marketing and, and research and all that kind of stuff. It's very cool. Wow. We kind of yeah. do, do the whole shebang. Yeah, yeah exactly. Anything, anything in the college realm, we'll do it. Yeah. Wonderful. And if you could kind of, how long have you worked for Black Sheep? Um, so I, I started there in college when we were still doing satire. So total, it's been about seven and a half years. Wow. The corporate office, it's been about three and a half. Um, so, you know, I've, I've definitely seen a lot of the different things that we've done and I've seen firsthand our evolution and you know where we started where we're at now and where we're going and it's it's been really great to to see that growth of a startup and a small company and um, you know of that entrepreneurial spirit that, that we get to see firsthand at PFW as well um, but also in the real world even out here in Chicago not Pennsylvania but um, you know still seeing that um, that you know everyone sort of pitching in and helping out and doing what we need to to uh, to make this company work, yeah. So you've seen the the company from from kind of like the beginning to, to now. You've worked your way up and seen yeah. it from all different angles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's I've definitely seen a lot of growth. I've had a lot of different positions, um, and you know, at the campus level and at the corporate level. So it's um, it's been really rewarding to then you know grow into the position that I'm in now in operations, where I'm you know able to make sure we're running everything smoothly. And I have a deep understanding of what that means because of my history and, and with the company, yeah. Which is important and, and a perfect segue, uh, Addie, into my, into my next question. I mean, as we talked about in your introduction, you're the director of operations. So what exactly does that mean? What are some of your roles and responsibilities? And maybe even kind of tell us kind of what a typical day consists of. Yeah, so operations for us as a, as a smaller company is sort of a catch-all. Um, you know, we have a variety of things that fall under that. We have a graphic designer slash office manager, which, um, you know, is, is sort of the role that that takes. Um, and, you know, we've got software development and operations as well, uh, plus our data department. So anything market research related is handled by myself and one other person. And then our recruitment team is also, you know, managed by myself 
by me as well. And they, um, they're the ones that are recruiting all the 2000 students that we've got on the campus level. Um, so, you know, we all sort of work together and, and make this company run internally um, versus the external managers and sales people who fit, work on the outside. Uh, so operations is everything internal and, and sort of anything that we need to make this company run. Um, so day to day, uh, you know, I'm essentially a manager, really. Um, and that is, you know, a lot, you know, I absolutely have a ton of my um, tips and my best things to, to come from uh, PFEW. In fact, like, you know, yesterday I was uh, discussing with one of my one of my employees and I was saying, you know, answer a question with a question, which is something we say all the time as a, as a teaching tool. So, um, you know, I've definitely learned a lot for, as being an advisor and being a student um, from that for my current role as a manager. Um, and you know, so with managing people um, and managing the department comes a project management as well, which we also deal with a lot at PFEW of making sure that we get everything done on time. So that comes to software development and making sure that we hit our deadlines with our projects and we consider every piece and every little bit of input and testing that needs to go into software development. Um, if you were to have told me that I would be managing software development, even like Two years ago, I would have called you crazy, but here I am doing it. Um, so, you know, that is, that's a big part of my day as well, is, is making sure that those projects are on track, um, in addition to, you know, making sure my people are on track. Um, and then I also handle a lot of data elements being surveys and focus groups, so that's organization and running, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, writing things, writing questions, writing uh, plans and emails and so it's sort of all over the place, um, but that's what, you know, that's what a smaller company is. You're doing a, a, a handful of tasks to make sure that everything's running properly. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's really fun, yeah. And you should certainly get to learn a lot by doing a lot of different things, and that, you know, helps to open up some doors, you know, even for other opportunities. So that's wonderful. Well, congrats. That's fantastic. Now, take us back. We, we've talked a little bit about now what your role is as the director of operations, but tell us maybe back when you were you were in high school and you're thinking about, you know, life after high school, where you're going to go to college, what you were going to study. How, what was your educational pathway? I mean, I think you're, you're if we may share with our viewers, uh, you know, we, uh, you're, you're in Chicago right now, you know, working, but you're originally from uh, Pennsylvania. So yeah. if you want to take us back to maybe high school and, and work us through the, the process there. Yeah, of course. So I'm from Phoenixville. Um, you know, I grew up there my whole life. And um, I, Phoenixville High School is a, a bit of a small one compared to the other ones around it. You know, graduating class of about 250 when I was there. Um, so it, it really was a great opportunity to um, have leadership with within the school. Um, but also at, at a lo level that wasn't too intimidating. So it was a really great place, a really great level to, um, to experience that, that type of uh, leadership. Um, and from there, you know, I was in FBLA and I did junior achievement. And of course, I, I participated in PFEW. Um, and, I, and I actually participated because my brother uh, got, was a student a couple years before me and came back and was raving about it. Just like, oh my gosh, I can't, it was so much fun. My brother is not one to be very into school. So, um, so I was like, well, that sounds pretty cool. I guess I'm going to go to that. Um, and you know, so, so when time came for me between junior and senior year, I was like, all right, go to PFEW. This is great. Um, I actually skipped the presentation, uh, for my, for my class. I know Michelle hates this story <laughs> um, because, because I was already going, I already knew I was already in, I, I knew that I was going. Um, and so I, uh, I was glad to participate in that, um, you know, was the president of the company, which was great or the CEO, sorry. Um, the CEO of the company at PPW. Um, and, you know, I, I knew that business and, and seemingly management was something that I was good at. I w didn't know exactly what aspect of, of this was really calling to me. Um, you know, I, I found it difficult to, to grasp what I liked the most. Um, you know, in high school, I was very into statistics courses and, and some of the math courses, but also very into history and English. I was kind of all over the place. I couldn't figure out what I wanted. 
Um, and then I ended up going to Michigan State. Uh, my family's from Michigan, so uh, that was sort of where I'd always wanted to go. Um, and, you know, I went in totally undecided. I, I had no idea of exactly what I wanted to major in. I was considering journalism and business and pretty much everything but science. I, I was like, you know what, I'm not, I'm, biology is not for me. Uh, <laughs> but everything else is fair game in my eyes. Um, and I ended up doing very well in my entry level economics courses. And from there, you know, I, I discussed with some of my professors of whether or not that was right for me. And, and they were like, this is absolutely right for you. If you're getting this, if you're doing well in these courses, then you should absolutely pursue it. And, and I'm glad I did, because it, it did seem to be the, the right path for me of that sort of bridge between math and what the numbers mean and, and the history behind them and, and all that kind of stuff. It, it really pulled together everything that I, um, everything that I knew I liked and was interested in. And, and I really um, found what was, and even the business aspect of everything really worked for me with, with economics. And then, you know, pretty much everybody from Michigan State moves to Chicago. So we all just kind of fall here. Um, and, and yeah, and I love it here. Um, this is definitely home now, even though Pennsylvania, Phoenixville will always be my original home. Oh, wonderful. That's great. Thanks for kind of filling us in on all of that because it's, you know, is it the different, um, you know, programs and opportunities, um, you know, and maybe risks perhaps that you took in high school that kind of led you to, you know, where you're at now and in the role that you're in now. And I, although I know you said you never would have imagined yourself being where you're at right now a couple of years ago, but in a way maybe you did because you saw some great skills and talents within yourself that knew you knew that you'd be able to be a leader and be the director of operations, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, I think that that is, you know, when I look back at where I've come from, I'm, I, I realize that I've been doing this for about 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. But though I'm, I might be four years into my career, professional career, mm -hmm. I've been working in business and, and leading in business for about 10 years, which, you know, again, at, at this point as a mid 20 year old, um, I, I'm a bit of a minority, but I'm, but my history is accurate at that point yeah Fantastic. yeah okay and congratulations that's wonderful yeah. Yeah. now what um for a student a high school student who's sitting in you know in school and kind of thinking about what i'm going to do after high school um you know where i want to go to college what i want to major in that sort of thing um you know if a student was looking to get into the career field um such as yourself what kind of classes or courses would you uh recommend that they take to prepare for that yeah, I mean, I'm a little biased, but economics is a great course. Um, you know, again, it'll it's it's difficult and it, it can be tough to grasp sometimes. But the wide perspective that those courses will give, uh, both macroeconomics and microeconomics, are really um, really essential to growing in a business field and understanding uh, how things run. Um, you know, any other sort of teamwork classes, you know, I think would be very helpful. Anything where you can find group work is going to be very, very important um, to understanding the different dynamics. And, you know, there's always the classic joke of, you know, there's always one person who doesn't do anything in the, in the group project. And that's sometimes how it's going to be in real life. And, you know, you have to, you know, those, those things really are um, real life simulators and really important experiences. So, so make sure that those are, uh, part of your curriculum. Um, and then beyond that, you know, my, my favorite course that I took, the most valuable course I took in college was a personal finance class. And if that's not something that some, that a student's getting in high school or, or maybe not enough, you know, maybe it's a course that they're getting in high school, but they're not paying rent. So they don't feel it the same way that you might in college when you're mm -hmm. looking to, you know, rent an apartment and pay utilities and, uh, have fun. Um, you know, that was a huge impact on my growth past college and how I was able to realize that I could afford to live in Chicago. It wasn't scary. I didn't need to go back home because I was like, oh, no, I know how to financially plan to pay my rent. And, you know, I know how to project and see what this is going to look like. So that was just important for life. And I, I highly recommend anyone take uh, a personal finance class, whether it be a college course or an online course or something like that is the most valuable thing you can do for yourself. Um, and you know, I also really loved being able to take the opportunity to um, take language courses and things like that too. Were, were really fun. I got to take Japanese for a little bit, 
um, and Latin, which I had taken in high school, but it was way harder in college, of course. Um, so anything, anything sort of, you know, making use of your, uh, uh, what are they called? The extra, not extracurriculars. Uh, not yeah, not. extracurricular activities. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Whatever those are. Or organizations, clubs or, within your school, things exactly. like that. Any mm -hmm. sort of opportunity to take beyond the course, beyond the coursework is also uh, huge too. Yeah. Wonderful. And to your point, yeah, I mean, learning it's one thing, but to actually experience it and put those skills to the test, yeah. and put them into use, it makes makes a world of difference. And it's kind yeah. of like that aha moment, like, ah, that's why they taught us that, you exactly. know? Yes, that's why they made us do that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It all makes sense then, right? Yeah. Now, um, back to, to um, the Black Sheep Inc. Um, wh what is it that you, and obviously, as we talked about, you, you have a variety of different tasks and things that you're responsible for and oversee, but what is it, maybe one or two things that you enjoy most about your job? Um, you know, I really like that I, I really like being able to see people grow and, and foster uh, relationships and growth and, and teach in a way um, as a manager um, mm -hmm. and, and as a manager of projects as well. I think that that is it's huge to be able to see progress and to, um, you know, be at least a driving force in that progress of mm -hmm. saying, you know, this is this is something that we built when it comes to software, right? This is a, a something that we built from the ground up, and we're continuing to make better and enhance, and um, you know, seeing that growth and the the benefits it gives to our employees is really great. Um, and then when it comes to managing people. You know, being able to give advice um, and, you know, see people use that advice and it works, you're like, oh, great, I did a good job. Um, and I think that that is, uh, you know, really, really great, too, is being able to see people grow and people learn. Um, yeah, I think that, that watching growth and progress is, is at the core of the favorite parts of my job, yeah. Wonderful. I'm sure there's many others, but yeah. that, that's exciting. Now, somebody who's looking to enter... Um, you know, this career field, um, how can they stand out from the rest? Yeah, the number one thing that we have, uh, that we hire on really is our core values and our top core value is ambition. And so what we're looking for is someone who not just sees the job in front of them and wants to do a good job there, but they are looking beyond that. How do I make this more efficient and better? How do I make this company more efficient and better? How do I make myself within this company and in the world better and more efficient and how do I make all of this work together so we really we really look for people who are ambitious um, and and ready to grow um, that that is definitely a huge a huge uh, piece that we look at and um, you know it can be tough to describe how how you might be ambitious uh, and I, I think that that is it can be difficult but but being able to say that you know you're um, interested in seeing the whole picture and and far down the line are uh, you know the really important pieces of that and now for students that are once again who are sitting in high school and they're preparing for a life after high school some of them maybe are going to go off to college or a technical school a trade school maybe some are going to go into the military some are going to go right out into the workforce yeah. uh, obviously there's lots of different choices but uh can you offer maybe any any tips or advice for for those students um as they prepare for that and and maybe you've you've received some wonderful advice from someone that you would, would like to share yeah that could be helpful yeah. I know the, the best piece of advice that I received as a high school graduate was from one of my friend's dads, very successful man, um, you know, and he was the first of his family to go to college, accountant, sort of worked his way up to CEO, which is an awesome story. And, and the number one thing he said to me was, don't let the books get in the way of your education. And I really loved that because it really proves that there's more than one way to succeed and there's more than one way to learn and there's a lot, there's a lot more things that go on in life rather than just traditional success, if you will. Um, and so I think that that is huge, even if, you know, I was definitely a college person and definitely someone who loved to study, but I think that there was a lot more to um, my college experience about growth and learning about, you know, 
paying rent <laughs> and what, you know, all of the things that come with growing up um, as life after high school is. Um, and, and I really think that those four or five years after leaving high school are critical and the things that you learn and the things that you listen to and soak up are going to make you who you really are. Um, and so I think being open and, and listening and learning and being open to learning more than just the books and, and what, what you think you might supposed to be doing or, or whatever is going to be uh, massive, yeah. That's great. Great. Some great advice for sure. And and finally, I know, Addie, that uh, volunteering is a big part of your life. Uh, and, and if I may I say, uh, you've been an active participant in the, as you had mentioned earlier, in the Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week or PFEW, as most people know us as um, that you've been involved in that, with that program for, for many years now, um, about 10 years, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and you started out as a student in high school, as you talked about, a little bit about your experience previously. Uh, and then actually uh, loved the experience so much that you took on an internship with our organization for a few summers. And now you've been a volunteer mentor to uh, students uh, for several years throughout the course of the summer, mentoring students and, as well as a speaker uh, at our program for a number of years. So is that, you're the Jill of all trades. You do it all. Yeah, yeah, uh, but, but Addie, if you could tell us, how, how, how did your your participation in PFEW impact you, which you kind of talked a little bit about that already, but, and why even now, several years later, why is it continue to be something so important to you? Yeah, I mean, as a student, it was great. Um, first of all, it was great to, to work with students outside of my school. Um, and, you know, Pennsylvania is a wonderfully diverse state. Um, you have every type of person in the state of Pennsylvania. And I think that that is, a major asset and bringing those students together and making sure that they don't know anybody in their team is a, an amazing experience in itself um you know 10 years later some of my uh some of my classmates you know i still keep up with on social media you know thankfully mm -hmm. we're able to to do that um and i think that is is really uh amazing um and so you know that that experience as a student was, again, so so wonderful. I, I could not stay away. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of continued to have an impact on my life. Uh, and, you know, as a student, I was able to have an extra leadership opportunity. And, and not just, you know, there's, there's leadership opportunities for everyone within a company to take on responsibility and to have ownership of something. And I think that that is, that is huge. Um, because a lot of students might feel like there's no space for them. You know, they might go to a school where with a thousand person class or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, something like that and just not feel like there's room for them. Uh, but at PFEW, there absolutely is. Um, and then, you know, as working there in the summers, I was able to sort of get both the student side, you know, sort of listen into both sides and, and get a, a working experience, uh, you know, understanding what offices run like and, um, you know, the different, aspects of a job as a you know 19 year old was was also huge um and then being a, a student mentor uh has been i mean i it's the closest thing to teaching i'll probably ever do um but it really is again it's that same sort of fulfillment of being able to guide students to something and seeing that they understand and succeed and, and that's sort of with being a speaker as well as you know i sort of give my spiel and then I watch the students understand what I said and, and do it themselves and I think that that is um, really really wonderful as well and I'm, I'm every time I'm impressed that I've managed to, to get through to them with something so uh, you know maybe it's not the most exciting thing they've heard that day um, so you know I think that there's there's you know like you said I've kind of had this from every angle and I've seen um, I've seen the program through and through and you know I I see everything that it can do from the student level to the uh, volunteer level to the speaker level. It really does have an all around impact and, and you'll get something different from any role that you take within that. 
it definitely. I mean, it's a it's a rewarding experience any way you cut it. And even as as, as a you know part of the staff working behind the scenes, it's it's just as rewarding for us as, as it is for our mentors like yourself and and the students who participate. And and Addie, we thank you for your service and and you know passion for our, our program and your your. Um, you know, the time and effort that you you know put into it each each summer and the time you take away from work to be there so thank you for that and you know for um again for a student who maybe um you know you you said that your brother went to pfew and kind of said oh Addie, you're going to do this when you you know yeah. next year um but for somebody that doesn't maybe have a sibling who did it um you know um for someone who's thinking about it um you know, um, what advice would you give to them? Uh, who's somebody who's thinking, well, should I do PFEW? I'm not really sure. Uh, any advice for them to a student who's considering it? I mean, I think I think there's something for absolutely any student to give or to take. You know, like I mentioned, I'm not necessarily a biologist, but I think that y even this experience could show you that you know you're going to have to work as a team and research projects, even if you're a biologist, right? So, so being able to have that experience of understanding what taking a project is working with other people is going to have have an, ex an impact on your life uh, from that. Um, not to mention the ability to just not be at home for a week, you know, as a 16, 17 year old, like it's pretty nice to have a week just not at home for the summer. Um, and I, I think that anyone looking to, uh, and, I, and I think that there's students who leave uh, come to PFEW with that sort of mentality, but but always leave with a message that they got from a speaker or um, you know or a relationship that they made with with a classmate that becomes a lifelong friendship. Um, and you know, I think that there is absolutely something to gain from every single student, whether it be a group activity or you know maybe they learn that they're really great at finance or mm -hmm. that they're really great at marketing or or art mm -hmm. or something you know there's mm -hmm. absolutely something for everyone um everyone there and if if a student thinks that maybe there's not i promise there is um uh, you know there the speakers are so so diverse and their topics are so poignant that mm -hmm. you know it's it's impossible not to take something from at least one of them. So, you know, I think every student has absolutely something to gain um, by attending for sure. Absolutely, because everybody's looking to go different pathways. Some maybe are going to go into business or maybe some of them are not, you know, maybe some of them right. want to go into the medical field or maybe they want to be a teacher or a doctor or a lawyer, or, you know, whatever, you know, but I, I think you bring up a wonderful point that, you know, there is a takeaway. There's something for everybody at PFEW um, and experiences and opportunities for, for everyone to gain that they can apply in whatever career path they go into. So thank you for, for sharing that. And if I, let me end here. Uh, by just simply saying, I don't have any better words other than thank you, <laughs> Addie, for, for joining us here today. Truly, it's, it, it's been an honor and a privilege to spend this time with you. Uh, you've really done a fantastic job of giving our viewers an opportunity to explore what it's like to be in management, uh, and as, as well as learn the importance of you know, teamwork. Um, and many other, you know, skills and talents as well as you share. And, and truly, there, there's no doubt about it. Uh, your expert insight here, your tips and advice shared uh, will help prepare our future leaders for success regardless of what career path they may choose. Of course, and thank you, Michelle. Thank you to the whole staff. You know, I, I'm sad I'm not able to see you all in person this year, but I'm glad that I'm able to see you virtually. So that's, uh, that's enough for this year, yeah. Well, thank you again, and we're, we're, we look forward to 2021 exactly. and many years after that. <laughs> Thanks, Addie. Right, and okay. finally, if, if you'd like to connect with Addie directly, her contact information will follow at the conclusion of this interview. I know Addie would love to connect with you. Thanks for watching.